Today we are talking about the Apple ecosystem. Uh, I've been predominantly a Mac user for many years, but I was also an Android user for a really long time, and I didn't have an iPhone, an iPad, really any other Apple products until the last year or so when I start to switch everything over. So when people think of the Apple ecosystem, probably one of the first things that pops in their mind is AirDrop. Uh, and I think that's one of the most widely used features of the ecosystem. There are a few other things like text messaging and calling features that most people know about, but there is some really cool stuff in here that not a lot of people know of. The best part about a lot of the features that I'm gonna be talking about today is they remove a lot of friction from situations where you would normally either have to put down one device and move on to another to complete a task or use multiple devices or services for something to get from point A to point B. So really this is just automating or improving some of these tasks and making things more efficient. Now that I've got an iPad, an iPhone and a Mac, uh, I've been really getting into some of these features and that's what we're gonna go over today. I'm just gonna go over how to quickly set up each of these features and then go over what they do. Uh, there's a lot of really cool stuff in here, so let's dive in. All right, so we're gonna be talking about phone calls, text messages, airdrop, sidecar, handoff, universal clipboard, instant hotspot, camera, and sketch or markup. The last two are really closely tied to each other. We're gonna start off talking about some of the more well-known features first, and then we'll get into some things that people may not know about. Uh, just keep in mind for a lot of these features to work, you will have to be signed into the same Apple ID on all these devices, and you'll probably want to be on the same Wi-Fi network for a lot of them as well. So first things first, phone calls. Uh, with this enabled, you'll be able to receive phone calls on your Mac or your iPad. To set this up on my Mac, I'm just going to go to FaceTime, Preferences, and on the Settings tab, I'm just gonna go halfway down and make sure calls from iPhone is checked. On my iPhone, I'm going to go to Settings, Phone Calls on Other Devices, and then Allow Phone Calls on Other Devices. I found this to be really handy, especially if you've got headphones on and you're working away. A call pops up on your screen and you can just answer it from your MacBook and everything just comes through your headphones without having to look at your phone. I find it less disruptive to my workflow and it's pretty much a seamless transition. And the same goes for text messages. Just like phone calls, you can get all of your text messages through your iPad or your Mac. On your iPhone, you're going to go to Settings, Messages, Send and Receive to adjust where to send and receive your messages from. And then from the same menu, you're going to go to Text Message Forwarding. On the iPad, you'll find any relevant settings by going through the same process. To enable this on your Mac, you just need to go to the Messages app, click on the iMessage tab to adjust any settings you want to update like what number to send the messages from, sending read receipts and all that good stuff. Again, just like phone calls, this is super handy to be able to be working away and just be able to respond to texts on my keyboard rather than having to pick up my phone to respond. Both of these examples are pretty straightforward, just a small convenience. From here, things start to get more interesting. AirDrop is probably one of the most widely used features on this list. A lot of people with iPhones probably already know how to do this, but I'll just go through it anyway. On Mac, you'll either want to control click or right click on a file from the Finder and choose Share, or you can click the Share button in the App window. From there, you can select AirDrop and choose a device in the list. You can also open AirDrop from the Finder and drag documents onto a device. The process is pretty much the same on a phone. You just click the share button and tap AirDrop where you'll just share to the selected device. Uh, just a note here that your files will go into your download folder on your Mac. I use AirDrop pretty frequently for transferring files and pictures and it takes away the painstaking process of having to upload files to Google Drive or Dropbox from one device to another. Uh, it's really handy and it's definitely a time saver. 
Onto Sidecar, one of the coolest features in the ecosystem, in my opinion. Uh, with Sidecar, you can turn your iPad into a second monitor. Essentially, you can have a portable dual monitor system. Uh, to set it up, you'll just go to the control center icon on your Mac, click that, choose your iPad from the menu. There's a bunch of commands along the side of your iPad screen to work with your Mac and to disconnect the sidecar session. And you actually have a touch bar like you would on a MacBook, even if you're running a MacBook Air or something without a touch bar. So it's really kind of neat to have that available. You can still use gestures for actions and scrolling, and you can use the Apple Pencil for things like drawing or editing photos while extending or mirroring the display. Honestly, I don't use that part too much, but I have to use this for the dual monitor setup a little. And I think it's super useful if you are mobile or working away from home. It's also really clean looking. You don't have any wires connected and there isn't any lag or anything between the devices. Next on the list is Handoff. This basically allows you to be able to work on or view something on one device and switch to another one that's close to you on the same network. And then you'll just pick up where you left off. It's also utilized for a bunch of other features I'm talking about, so you'll need to have it on to work with some of the other stuff that we're talking about today. To enable it, on Mac, go to the Apple menu, System Preferences, click General, and select Allow Handoff between this Mac and your iCloud devices. On iPhone and iPad, go to Settings, General, AirPlay, and Handoff, and turn on Handoff. You can use this with a bunch of Mac apps like Mail, Reminders, Calendar, Contacts, and so on. I find myself using this with Safari once in a while, say if I'm looking at something on my phone and I want to view the desktop version of a site, I'll just go on my Mac and I can see the little handoff browser icon in the dock. And I can just click that and it'll pop up and I'm viewing whatever I was viewing on my phone. And one thing that I do use pretty frequently that utilizes handoff is Universal Clipboard. All you need to do to have that working is have handoff turned on and you'll be able to copy and paste text and images from one device to another. Uh, I personally find this really useful. I was using messaging platforms before to send myself messages or images just so I could go on another device and copy and paste them wherever I needed them to go from there. This makes it so easy to just copy some text from my iPhone or a picture or just paste it on my iPad or my Mac. Another small useful feature is Instant Hotspot. This just easily allows you to turn your phone into a wireless hotspot or your iPad if that has a cellular connection. It's really easy to use. On your Mac, you just click the Wi-Fi icon and choose the name of your phone that you want to use as your personal hotspot. It works as expected. There's nothing earth shattering here. It's just a super handy way to set up a hotspot. Onto the camera, on any supporting apps, you can control click inside the app or a document and go to import from iPhone or iPad take photo or scan documents. They both behave pretty much the same. The difference being taking a picture is just going to use your regular camera on your phone, while scan document will have a custom view for scanning. Once you do that, you can confirm your photo and it just shoots it right into the document. I definitely am more into the scanning side of things. Being able to upload documents without having to use a printer or scanner combo is really nice. And it is actually connected to the final point that I want to talk about today, which is sketch and markup. Uh, you can use these to convert sketches from your iPad or your iPhone into documents or live markup. I find the handiest way to use this is finding a PDF that you want to mark up and just click the little markup button. And once you're in the markup window, you can do things like add signatures, select a device, and then just sign your name on your iPad with your Apple Pencil and it'll just bring it in and you can put it wherever you need it. This basically eliminates the whole process of scanning documents, printing them off, signing them and scanning them again. Again, something that is really, really handy. I find the scan function works really well and it's totally usable. All in all, there is a great set of features here and these are just the ones that you're going to use with an iPad, an iPhone, and a Mac. There are more features once you get into using the Apple Watch and the Apple TV, 
but I won't get into those. Uh, I just want to focus on these devices. I hope that Apple keeps pushing on things like this to help productivity and anything that we can get to help automate tasks and make them less painstaking is totally a win in my eyes. So that's all I've got for this one. I would love to hear what your favorite ecosystem feature is or if any of these features are news to you that you didn't know about. As always, if you wanna help me out, hit that like button. If you want to help me out even more, hit the subscribe button. Thank you guys so much for watching and I will see you in the next video.